Hi everybody, I'm Karen and I'm May and we are from Boomers, Boomers to Gen Z. Z. So today we're going to talk about someone that you would love to meet dead or alive uh, for dinner and why. So yes. please don't go away, stay tuned. So Karen, if you got granted one wish mm -hmm. to have dinner with someone either dead or alive, who would it be and explain why? Um, oh, I got so many. So you can only choose one, choose Karen. Choose one. Okay, <laughs> choose one. Um, I absolutely adore, adore Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> okay. 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 So uh, for those of you who don't know, Oprah is now... I think she would be about 70 years old right now and she wow. looks absolutely amazing but her story goes beyond that i i just find that uh she grew up in rural mississippi extremely poor and i mean you talk about rags to riches right mm. she actually wore rags uh those potato bags uh the the, the material as an outfit because they was just so poor and I didn't know that. Yeah, it was uh, very tragic. And in so many ways, anyone in that situation would have really gone, I mean, it would not have been good for her at mm. all, right? Um, but she was a brilliant child because she, with her grandmother's help, she actually learned to read the Bible even before, I think by three to five years old, she was able to read quite well which is amazing so yeah. obviously she's a smart kid uh, and, and all that and uh, she was raped and molested and sexually abused by several people in her family uh, where she did get pregnant I think before she even turned 14 and um, I I believe I'm not totally sure but that, that either the child was still born or uh, she had to give it away. I'm not sure, but it was it, when you think about someone going through all that trauma and to rise above it and to be the richest billionaire, not just mm. a millionaire mm -hmm. in the world, and has such and a woman <laughs> and a woman and black, yeah, uh, with all the challenges. I mean, she truly is an inspiration to me. Because I I love what she represents. Mm. So, yeah. So, I would have dinner with her and I would have so many questions. So, like, what would be, like, the top three questions that you would ask her at dinner? Um, so, I, I, I read her biography and I listened to her a lot. So, one of the things was uh, she was quite a big lady and how she knew that the uh, the color purple was a role that she wanted to uh, act in because it's a story about the the slavery and how this woman got out of you know it's actually almost like her the story, story you know and and so in this in this instance um she met Steven Spielberg uh but she could didn't hear anything from them so she thought that she didn't get the role and all that. So long story short, I won't go through it, but it's like she went to a fat farm because she thought that the reason why she didn't win or uh, get the role was because she was too fat. Mm. And and then she she was jogging and, and she, she the it's about faith and the fact that she somehow as she was jogging and doing the fat farm thing, <laughs> she decided to just let go and let God, the universe, decide for her. And she just let go and said, okay, I've done everything to get to the meeting mm -hmm. and I'm going to just trust you to do what you need to do to create the life that I'm supposed to have. For me, our answer is, how could you come to that, to just let go and trust God in such absoluteness, mm -hmm. if that makes sense? Because I, I struggle. There are times when, I mean, I'm, I'm not a, I won't say I'm a religious person, but I, at the same time, I do believe in God. I do believe there are goodness in this world. But to just trust, yeah. trust yeah. that everything will be 
the way it should be for you. And I would like to know what was that that allowed her to just trust. Okay. And literally at the end of that job, right, she got a call and they said, oh, Oprah, come, there's a call for you. And she got the role. And she went straight to uh, Dairy Queen and had ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so that will be the, the one question. Um, number two, how she can rise above and find, um, you know, when, when everyone is attacking her or uh, making her, uh, when she created her own, as in her own network, which is the OWN, and and how, in the, of course, in the initial stages, it was topsy-turvy, like any businesses, and how she rose above it in, you know, letting go of all that noise and just staying true to her path. Mm. So those are the crucial questions. That, and I, I just absolutely love the way that she gives back. She gives back to the people around her. She gives back to the the students of Africa, the, the, mm. the ladies. So she's just an inspiration. I, I just absolutely, if I have a chance to sit down with her, I think I'll be like, oh my god! <laughs> I'll be like, like fan girling around. <laughs> so not much questions would be asked. <laughs> no, no, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, May? Um, I think that I don't know this. So I, I personally have always really, really admired the Princess Diana. Okay. And the reason I admired her is because, like, growing up, like, we obviously like heard a lot of stories that were like unfortunate in her situation but then at the same time as a, as a girl right she has like she's a princess yeah. like that's like that's like the epiphany of like what we all want to be you know you want to be a princess um but I've always kind of like liked her and tried to follow as much of like her stories I actually watched like old interviews and documentaries the reason I like her is because for her to have um made such statements whether it was verbal or just the way that she carried herself in that time and to have garnered so much support and love from a fan base, which is like in the United States and um, in the United Kingdom, sorry, and all around the world mm -hmm. for having these beliefs that honestly, like the people were probably not ready for yet either, like to open up these concepts, um, to be a little bit more open, especially coming from the royal family, how she did that so elegantly with everything that was happening, like in her marriage and how, she was as much as being a princess is like idolized she was part of a constitution that wasn't very nice to her mm -hmm. and like to just bring that down to earth and just sit down and talk to her because as a girl right like as a girl growing up the the first outfit that I think I dressed up in was a princess outfit and I think that a lot of us need to realize that 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 idea of being a princess is actually not as like you know, pretty as we think it's it is. Glorified yeah, well. and I think that Princess Diana is, is an example of how much when you try to just be human in that role, it's actually really greatly frowned upon. And if I had a chance to have dinner with her, I would ask her that because I don't think there was anyone she could talk to about her problems. Mm. There was no one that she could converse to, people who probably frowned upon her way of thinking. Um, so I would want to ask her, how did she keep going when all a lot of the world was turned against her? True. And how did she then somehow become so lovable that even though people had a different um, mindset, they loved her so much so that there was more people at her funeral than there was at Queen Elizabeth's. Ah, true. Yeah. <laughs> how did how did you do that? And is after she passed, it's not as if the people changed. Mm -hmm. This mindset is still there even today when it comes to how people view like the royal family or what they're supposed to be. Um, and I watched Crown. <laughs> I watched, oh, yay, Crown. <laughs> watched Crown. So I, I was really, really obsessed with that whole thing. Not just because I knew princesses and princes and kings and queens, but just, and she did it so elegantly. Like, you know, like, and I think that in today's society, like we see like, oh, when we're having troubles with like our husband or if you're having like this type, like people are judging you or people are spreading these rumors about you. You see people get so depressed. You mm. see people try to um, sort of be like, oh, everyone thinks of me like that. Lah, so I'm just going to be like that, lah, mm -hmm. you know, but sometimes it's not about just having people to talk to and Princess Diana proves that like it's just about really knowing yourself and believing in yourself and just I mean she did die at the end love but <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she killed herself but I guess we still don't know I would just really want to ask her 
where, what drove her? Like, where did she, wh- who taught her these things? Who broke her mind a little bit mm-hmm. to think outside of the box? Where did that come from at that point of time? And if she's able to do it back then, then whatever struggles I think I'm going through, mm-hmm. I could handle it as elegantly as a princess oh, wow. and um, probably draw from myself instead of thinking that I need to draw from other people. I, I think for late, uh, Princess Diana, right, um, she did get married, married very, very young. Yeah. So she's very impressionable. And uh, I think like everyone, we all thought, oh, the princess marrying the, the king. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, all that happily ever, ever after. Happily ever after. I think that what draws her to, or what people get drawn to her is that she is a very compassionate and uh, like, she really reaches out as a human mm. instead of like I'm princess and you are nobody or yeah. you are low low man you know kind of thing. Um, for me, I feel that she the fact that she brought attention to AIDS mm. that was the most pivotal thing I felt because um, for the longest time I of course you were not born then but um, AIDS patients were were highly um crucified yeah <laughs> like literally yeah. They, they they nobody there to touch them they do not get hugs they do and the fact that she walked up to a patient and hugged them i mean she used her platform i, I mean at least she did something good like she yeah. used her platform yeah. her, her 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 influence and then literally the mindset change and the second thing when she walked through the men uh, uh, the minefields mm-hmm. and and you know where um, attention was not given and she actually hugged them walked through and showed that these are so dangerous because literally a kid could be running in and a field explode. and then it gets explode so she, yeah I think she she did all that but I pity the fact that she had to live in a bubble yeah. that is so unreal and I'm sure the pressure was phenomenal um, I, I guess it's this thing because she came at a time where the royal family was so stiff up the next day. So everything must be so proper and yeah. all that. And she came in as this warm, like real person that everyone could relate to. And, and don't She's, you think at the same time, it's just a, a, a lesson for us all yeah. that we have to be real and be true to ourselves instead I think of that's that's the thing about her that's just like imagine back in that time so like today right we have a lot of like influencers online mm. honestly like everyone can kind of become a celebrity nowadays because we have this influencer status mm. where you don't have to really do anything besides take really nice aesthetic pictures and you know post your lifestyle mm. and i've met so many people who are in that space because coming from marketing we were constantly meeting these type of people and they're not very nice no. like they they are in their own bubble that they think that they are better than you and they're not they, they're not approachable um they don't really do anything good with their platform Mm -hmm. is just gaining popularity on how pretty you are, how nice your skincare is, how well you edit your videos. And sometimes I just feel that like we have all of these people that um, are idolized. Even like when I was younger, I definitely idolized these like really pretty women. Um, But when it comes to like Princess Diana, she really shows that like she didn't have a platform like that. Honestly, like people would only capture what she did if let's say media was yeah, there. Yeah, with her outfit. It's yeah. always about her outfit and how she You know, looks. like, and if she was so compelling, that really shows that if we took away social media from a lot of these influences, they would be nothing. But with Princess Diana, when you strip her away from these things, there was this personality that just came across yeah. that just made her so loved. And like, yeah, I wasn't even born at that time. But that story just reigned and reigned. Like growing yeah. up in primary school, I think we looked at her so many times. Mm. Um, and if there's ever like a woman like a, of elegance that I look up to, it's definitely her. Oh, she is definitely very classy. I mean, yeah. I, I loved. I mean, her, her her style of dressing is elegant and classic all the way through. Um, but you know, um, it, it. I mean, going back to Oprah, the other thing that I do admire is that you know, her intelligence. Yeah. She and I she you know, and I feel that society values all this physically beautiful women. Not that I don't I don't mind. I like looking at them too, <laughs> right? 
But at, at the end of the day, looks can fade. And it is it is your intelligence. It is, uh, to me, Oprah has just aged so gracefully. She's more beautiful now than she was ever. And the fact that she is able to hold her own. Mm. And um, I wish that for every one of us, that we can hold our own and be comfortable in our skin and really uh, just, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, learn and and I love I love that about having a mentor, whether it's a real person mentor or someone that I just absolutely adore. So I do read a lot about what she's done and things like that, you know. So I wonder what is your uh person that you like to have dinner with, dead or alive, <laughs> and do share with us, isn't it? So if you comment, then we will also like reach out to you. We want to start speaking to more people, so make sure you comment, yeah. like, um, engaging with you guys is what makes this fun. Exactly. So it, don't thanks. forget to like, subscribe, and follow us, because we will not be able to do this if you don't support <laughs> us. And uh, most important, don't forget that this is just the sharing. We're just having fun with yeah. you. And uh, it's not a uh, uh, do or die and you, uh, things like that. <laughs> it's just a legal note. We are not here to advocate for anything else but just to have fun. So we'll see you next week. See you.